All right, everybody. Welcome to the Hot Shops Pottery. Welcome to our virtual open house. If you were to come to one of our real open houses, either Dan Tober or I or Maddie, you'd be sitting at one of the wheels and we'd be showing you what we love about the lump of clay that we get to play with every day. So just like there's hundreds of recipes for cookies and bread, there's hundreds of recipes for clay and glazes. We mix our own clay, but my clay doesn't taste as good as Play-Doh. So I'll do a quick little demo here for you. As I pinch the clay, the clay has to move. I keep the clay wet. The sponge is a tool that I use that's real simple, but if the clay starts to dry out, I can give it a little squeeze. And, because as the clay's wet, it just slides through my fingers. So I'll make a quick little cup. Sponge also gets any of the water that is collecting on the inside out. Makes the inside of this cup nice and smooth. Much better. Thank you, Kim, my wonderful assistant. Anyways, this is called a rib. My fingers are lumpy, bumpy, move all over the place. This gives me a nice smooth edge that helps me shape and get rid of some of the throwing lines. Now we're almost finished with this cup. We'll define the foot. Because the clay is soft, to get this cup off of here, all I need is the little piece of wire. And ta-da! Now I've got this big lump of clay. I can make another cup. Or I'll center up a little ball of clay that's a little bit larger. And I'll make a bowl. One of the things that I really like about working with the clay, you know, if I'm doing a drawing or a painting, it's one hand and it's the tool that gets to have all the fun. When I'm working with the clay, I get to use all ten of my fingers. And I'm still drawing, but instead of drawing on a flat two-dimensional piece of paper, I'm drawing in three dimensions. this rim just a little bit. Take the water out of the bottom. Sometimes I like to leave a nice little swirl in the bottom. Then I'm going to play with the rim a little bit. If I want some nice straight parallel lines, if I hold my tool real still, because the pot is turning, I can make these real nice straight parallel lines. Um, the little bits of stuff, I'll sand that off later. I'm not worried about that now. Um, you know, and, and we get tired of looking at the circles, and so we'll start to play with the rims a little bit. And this just, you know, my opinion, gives it a much more interesting look. If I want to, I can divide it up into six little pieces, make it look like a little buttercup flower. 
but this is for me much more interesting to look at a little bit more fun um, no question that this was made by human hands we'll define the foot just like we did on the cup These will have to dry out and sometime tomorrow I'll come back and I'll flip them over and trim the foot in them because the clay down here is still pretty thick. So this time I'll use the rest of the clay that's on the wheel, make something a little larger, a little bit more fun. I've always watched watching the clay move and all the different shapes that it takes between when we start and when it's finished. And then after it's dry, then we'll put it in an oven called a kiln. And we'll heat it up real slow to about 1800 degrees. And then let that cool, take it out, and then it's ready to glaze. And once it's glazed, we'll put it back in the kiln fire it to about 2300 degrees and that melts the stones that are crushed up that are a glaze and then it's ready so just like working on a small cup I start with a centered ball of clay I open it up right now I'm compressing the bottom I'm pressing real hard here so it won't crack and now I'm ready to start to pull up the cylinder. Keep the clay wet so that it slides right through my hands. So I've got the start of a real nice vase that could sit on somebody's kitchen table. I've got a vase kind of like this on my kitchen table and in the springtime when the lilacs are blooming I love to put lilacs in it. And the reason I like the lilacs is our neighbors got their whole backyard is got a big bush and so when they're not looking I jump the fence and grab some lilacs and put them in my vase. But the neighbor lady knows I do that and every year she gets a new vase for her kitchen table too but it's fun to tell the story that I jump the fence and steal the lilacs. So we're almost done. I'm going to trim a little bit of the extra clay that's always left on the bottom. I'm going to cut a foot in the pitcher or in the vase. Clean that up with the sponge a little bit. If I want to, I can put a little decoration. Well, the pot's still here on the wheel. Because I'm a professional, I get to use these very expensive precision clay tools. Next time you have mashed 
mashed potatoes and make them look good. Now, I can leave this pot like this, and it would be a vase, but if I want to switch it up and turn it into another kind of a pot with a quick pinch of my fingers, it becomes a pitcher. And this is ready to come off. Um, but let me show you what this looks like on the inside. Later tomorrow I would put a handle on it, but this is kind of show and tell. So I start with that solid lump of clay and every time I'm putting my hands in, I'm thinning and I'm shaping. The clay is very flexible, very rubbery. I have to stay focused. Um, you know, and when I work with a group of young kids, I'll say, how many of you have been told to focus? Is it important? Yes. Is it easy? No. So, anyways, and this clay can be used again and again, as long as it hasn't been fired and heated up over 600 degrees. Um, it can be dry for 100 years, and as long as it gets wet again, it's going to go back to soft, gushy clay. Um, otherwise, we'll let it dry out, we'll finish it, we'll fire it, we'll glaze it, and then it'll be put on the shelf for you to buy. So thanks for watching today. I hope you come back and check us out for a virtual open house often because there's going to be a lot of different things uh, coming your way in the next couple of days. So uh, uh, as always, check us out at the Hot Shops Art Center. We are open uh, to the public. We just can't have large groups in. Uh, 9 to 5 during the week, 11 to 5 on weekends. Uh, please bring a mask and uh, social distance. Thanks.